and uh, which looked very oriental for mm -hmm. me. And then with uh, the kind of big markets at Dongdaemun mm -hmm. um, at that time, mm -hmm. had been very, very um, impressive for me. When I began to live here in 2008, well, um, I knew some kind of Asian places. I had been living in Japan for a couple of years. For one year, I was living in Taiwan before coming here. And I enjoyed that in comparison to Taiwan, life was much more safe and much more, um, much better organized. Here in Seoul? Yes, oh. yes. Like there are sidewalks, for example, oh. to walk for pedestrians. I see. You sort of had to choose which images kind of represent Seoul the best. Oh, well, I, when I pick my motives for my paintings, oh. I look for things which I find very typical and very um, maybe ordinary. Mm -hmm. And I try to, to find the kind of well, essence of this kind of ordinary things. Right. And um, that is, of course, some, well, when it's special for uh, a certain place, it's uh, kind of different from uh, the other places. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I had been living in Taiwan before, there had been as well a lot of big high-rise new buildings, mm -hmm. but this kind of rooftop decorations mm -hmm. or uh, rooftop constructions had been highly decorated as mm. a, a Renaissance dome or so on. Mm. And I was quite fascinated with this mainly westernized uh, decorations on the uh, high-rise buildings <laughs> there. And I came here and it looked like socialist, realistic architecture of Hungary wow. or of Eastern Germany. Uh -huh or as a Eastern European. Because <laughs> if we never look at our own architecture thinking yes. that, okay, that's the yes. image of mm -hmm. our city. No, they are often constructed here. A lot of buildings, this kind of high-rise building oh. uh, of the same company in the same style mm -hmm. and then with numbers to mm -hmm. uh, find the right one, mm -hmm. paint it on. And that had been as well very typically in the Eastern European big cities uh, of socialistic times. Mm in Hungary or in Eastern Berlin or so uh -huh. on. There are these kind of big high-rise buildings with very little decoration mm -hmm. and so. And I found it strange to see very similar buildings here wow. too. That's very interesting to know actually. Uh, let's take a quick mm -hmm. break here and listen yes. to this question that was sent okay. by one of your mm -hmm. acquaintances. <laughs> Dr. Kim eun who is a senior researcher at Namjoon Park Art Center, also teaches graduate students at Hongik University and the Busan National University. She appreciates Ingo Baumgarten's unique passion toward the artist Namjoon Park, and she sent a special question to our guest. Kuriko,一日本文化和阿西亚文化的这种差异를이해하시려고노력하시면서양국간에서의어떤大陆化를하시는작품을하시는분이아닌가하지만독일적인어떤그런그특징과개성을잃지않으시면서이제열성적으로
So in Germany, where I studied myself, mm -hmm. art education had been very, very liberal. Mm -hmm. So myself, I have had never ever any kind of class in my, uh, uh, for my painting. Mm -hmm. And um, I have had from the first day in university, um, freedom to do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. That is very, very different from the Korean or the Asian uh, education in art. Mm -hmm. So I give now tasks which I have never done myself now mm -hmm. to my Korean students, mm -hmm. but I try as well to give them uh, a lot of freedom mm -hmm. and challenge them with mm -hmm. this kind of freedom uh, mm -hmm. because when somebody wants really to be successful as artist, as well, nobody is coming and giving tasks. Mm -hmm. You have to find your task yourself and mm -hmm. you have to organize the work yourself uh, to be successful. Mm -hmm. And with my teaching, I try to give to the students um, this kind of um, power to develop own ideas and to realize their own ideas mm -hmm. and to maybe promote them as well. And um, well, coming back to the, the basic question, the difference of Asian and Korean, uh, Asian and Korean art to European and German art, mm -hmm. There is a different attitude towards art. Mm -hmm. In Germany, there has been a long tradition, or in Europe, to see art as something like holy. Mm -hmm. And uh, like uh, to keep it uh, that kind of high up, the boundary of art and not art was very, very sharply defined. Mm -hmm. And here in Asia, there is, has not been such a strict limit between art and not art. Mm -hmm. Like in Europe, ceramic is not art. Oh. Ceramics is not art, it's craft. Oh. And in um, uh, 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 traditional Asian um, cultures, uh, ceramic is as highly as appreciated yes. as, um, as art. And as well, you can maybe sell a, a nicely made yes. porcelain or a ceramic plate uh, for the money as a painting too, oh. you could not do in Germany. Huh. And like this, that is maybe one difference mm -hmm. um, in between Asian mm -hmm. and uh, European cultures. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is showing in as well some kind of different aesthetic too. Mm -hmm. What things in life are you drawn into or what aspects of life are you drawn into as an artist? Oh, I'm uh, very much attractive as the uh, actual um, situation of uh, life mm -hmm. with this um, bright and dark sides together maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, but I'm not ex much interested in the kind of really extreme points. Mm -hmm. And um, by much more mm -hmm. in the middle, the kind of places of passage, mm -hmm. which you maybe just pass by without looking at. Mm -hmm. And I, with my art, I try to uh, stop at those places uh, where you normally pass by. Mm -hmm like the houses, the bridges, you go over the bridges, but not under, mm -hmm. and you don't watch the bridges, you just pass them. Right. But I try with my art to, to stop there and have a look at this kind of things, which might appear as well um, aesthetic in some places, mm -hmm. or which are at least typical for the, the general uh, atmosphere of life, mm -hmm. whether in Korea or in uh -huh. Europe. We always wonder, when are we going to see another artist like Peng Namjoon in Korea? Uh, because you're a teacher and uh, you've ex you have experiences with Korean students, what would you like to say to that question? I don't know whether when there is another person with this kind of big uh, impact and mm -hmm. aura like uh, Peng Namjoon or Namjoon Paik mm -hmm. is appearing. Mm -hmm. And um, I doubt maybe that uh, it is very easy to produce uh, somebody like this in mm -hmm. the uh, art education systems of Europe or of Korea because, well, actually uh, Namjoon Paik never visited an art school, mm -hmm. but he studied music and aesthetics and then he invented his techniques by himself mm -hmm. and without having a very formal art education at all. Mm -hmm. And that is maybe as well a little a part of his, the secret of his success, mm -hmm. that he has never been spoiled with kind of ideologies, mm -hmm. how to make art. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any uh, plans to have your exhibition here in Seoul? 
Um, I'm thinking about, I'm looking a little bit around where I can make uh, next exhibition okay. with my paintings. Okay. Yeah. When, you, um, when you know of those dates for your exhibition, please come back and visit us again. And thank you very much for your time. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. You can rewatch today's interview with Mr. Ingo Baumgarten, contemporary artist, on our Adidas webpage. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.